Dr. Rick Wallace here. It's Sunday morning. Uh, for many of you, this is the day you're getting up, getting ready to go to church. Maybe some of you are already headed out to uh, Sunday school. Some of us know what that is, and a lot of us don't. But uh, whatever it is that you're doing this morning, some of you are using this as your final day of recuperation before you head into the week. Uh, this is the day I start my week. This is a day of preparation, a day of planning, strategizing, laying out my week or the next two weeks, uh, reevaluating the week prior uh, to see ways that I can improve. And there are always ways to improve. Uh, so uh, this is what I do. Uh, I, I, it's a day of reflection, a day of spending time uh, early in the day uh, in reflection. Uh, searching myself introspectively to determine uh, where I've grown, where I'm struggling, what needs to improve, uh, how am I functioning in my responsibilities in life. And um, this introspective examination uh, covers every uh, aspect of my existence from uh, how am I performing as a husband? How am I performing as a father? How am I performing as a business owner, as a leader in the community, as a representation of manhood and specifically, in my case, black manhood? So it is a day of looking at myself and being honest with myself and challenging myself to be better. Uh, and that's what life is. If you're going to be successful in life, it's a simple. It's simple at the core. Now, how you get there and what you need to do in order to achieve it requires some commitment and some challenges and, and, and some things you go through. But at the very, at the very uh, purest form of it, you evaluate yourself and you determine that, okay, I can improve in an area. And you work on improving. And as you improve, you become better. Success is in the progression of becoming a better person across the board, not just with what you have in your bank account, not just with what you're wearing, what you drive, where you live, how you're viewed, but in your relationships, in your impact, and especially in your impact. Are you having an impact on the world around you? Are people's lives, are people's lives better because you're around them or they know you or they've come in contact with you? That's going to determine ultimately your legacy. The impact you have on the world is the world better because you were here or did you just exist or did you contribute to making it worse so that's that so i i want to talk to you today a little bit about dealing with some challenges as you progress towards what you see as your destiny but uh but before that i want to remind you that we are in the process right now for those who have responded so far thank you for responding i'm looking forward to working with you but we are now doing rapid change breakthrough sessions uh which is a 30 minute session with me uh and no charge um and we're doing the goal here at the vision Ethics institute is to do 550 uh from the point of start which was this past week uh to the end of august so that's the goal i'm doing all 550 it's 30 minutes it's uh you know it's it's a lot to do in that period of time. You know, I've thought it out and it's it's a lot to do in that period of time, but I believe that the impact will be measurable. I believe that it will allow access to uh, some energy, some ideas, some encouragement, some inspiration for people who may not normally have access to it. And I'm excited about it. So the information for the Rapid Change Breakthrough Sessions, uh, the questionnaire is actually in this post. If you want to work on it from a business perspective, just email me or email the organization, the support team at the address that's there, and you will receive a response with the questionnaire for businesses, and they are different, and uh, we'll set you up on that, but we're doing both of those, and the total of 550 by the end of August is the goal. Uh, also, uh, before I move forward, if you haven't ordered your signed copy of uh, let me see if I look. Uh, Critical Mass, uh, and I'm going to explain this book in detail uh, sometime today. Uh, I don't know if it'll be live, but it definitely will be in vi video form. And 
I'm going to explain this book, but Critical Mass is the, uh, the pulling together of all the elements and components necessary for optimal success in life in every area. And uh, this book is what uh, introduces you to it. It gives you a peek inside of my mind, how I work, how I work with my clients. And I'll share that with you uh, later on today. Now, let's talk about why so many of us get bogged down in the natural frustrations of life and never really truly get to being who we're capable of being. Number one is we have a proclivity or a tendency to interpret who we are, where we are by what we're going through. We have a tendency to behave based on how we feel about something. I wanna be very clear here. Uh, I don't wanna waste a whole lot of your time, but I wanna be very clear here. Look. This is, this is the truth of the matter. Much of what you are going to have to do to become exceptional at what you do, you're not going to feel like doing it. You're not gonna feel like getting up. Trust me, I've been having this struggle the last month or so. You're not gonna feel like getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Oh my God, 4.35 o'clock, 5.30. You're not gonna feel like it. But if that's what's demanded of you, you're not going to feel like hitting the gym. Not every day, unless you're just really that in tune with being fit, where you identify with it, where it's a part of your passion, then yeah, you will. But even then, there are going to be days where you get up and your body is just saying, I don't feel like it. Or your mind, maybe you got some bad news. Maybe it's been a rough week. Maybe you're mentally exhausted and you don't feel like it's not about what you feel so many of us get caught up in what we feel how i feel i don't feel it's not about what you feel because what you feel changes your emotions are constantly shifting based on all of the external uh stimulation that's going on around you you got people talking negative about you you got people wishing for your demise you got people calling you and texting you with bad news you got people sharing all kind of negative information on the internet and social media you got all these things going on you got fires you're trying to put out in your home fires you're trying to put out in your business it's your emotions are going up and down all the time how do you have consistency you have consistency because you don't operate based on how you feel. I don't treat people based on how I feel. I don't handle my kids or my wife based on how I feel. There are some times I'm just not in the mood to do anything but be by myself, but that's not what my requirements are as a father. Sometimes I'm looking at them and I'm shaking my head and I talk plenty noise, but they look at me and laugh because they know I love them. I talk major noise to baby all the time and she just laughed. She said, you hear me talking? Because at the end of the day, if she asks me to do something and it's within my power to do it, I do it. Not necessarily because I feel like it, but because as her man, I have a certain responsibility to do whatever I can. Now, if it's something that she's asking me for and I don't readily have it in front of me or I don't have the capacity. That's something I sit down and I mark down. There's nothing that she's ever mentioned to me that she needs, she wants, or she desires that hasn't been marked down, and I'm working toward it if I haven't already delivered it. And that is not because I wake up every morning feeling like it. It's because it's a part of what's necessary for me to do what I said I was going to do or what I say I need to do. I have a clear understanding of what my destiny is, not just as a businessman, not just as a, 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 a coach or leader or mentor or whatever, not just as a husband, not just as a, but meet in totality in every area and every aspect. I'm seeing with great clarity what it is that I am committed to doing. And it doesn't require that I feel like it. It requires that I be committed to it. And when you're committed to it, you're able to deal with the seasonal frustrations that are simply a part of life. See, what happens is, we base our life solely on the way I feel. I don't feel like it. I feel like I'm being this. I feel like I feel like I feel like I feel. I hear that word so much. I just feel. I don't care about how you feel. And I don't mean that in the sense that I don't care. I mean that in the sense that that has absolutely nothing to do with what needs to be done. It's not about how you feel. It's about what you're committed to because some days you're just not going to feel like it. And what are you going to do? 
Are you going to move with your feelings or are you going to move with the commitment of being better? Are you going to move with the commitment of being being empowered? Are you going to move with the... Now, this is the powerful thing, though. Here's what I can tell you. From my own experience, from working with literally thousands of people, from studying hundreds more who are all successful and at the top of the game in what they do, this is what I can tell you. When you wake up in the morning and it, or at any time of the day and there's something you don't feel like doing but you know you need to do, once you commit and make yourself do it, the moment you start, the further you get off into it, the more you feel like doing it. Who know that? How many, I, I learned this early in life, actually. I was a kid that every year I got uh, perfect attendance because I love school. But that, that, that doesn't mean that there were times I didn't wake up and I just didn't feel like going. And that, that's, that's the same way I am with work. I'm at work every day. It drives my wife crazy. We need to just, and so, so she's kidnapped me a couple of times in the last week and we went somewhere, but I've either worked before we left or after we got back or both. But, but, but I go to work every day because there's something I'm going after and it requires me to be committed to that type of effort. And people say, well, you need a break. No, I earn my breaks. I earn my breaks. And so, it, it, you know, I, I, I get embedded. It doesn't mean that I'm going 100 miles an hour and I'm intense all day. It just means that I have a commitment of doing certain things every day and I'm going to stick to that commitment. But here's what I can tell you. Way back in school, get up and go to school. Some days I wouldn't feel like it. But what I did do is I got up and I went anywhere. And what I found was by first, second period, dude, it's all good. It's amazing how your mind will convince you that you don't want to do something until you start doing it and your mind catches up, your body catches up. It's waiting on you to take control of the day, but so many of us are not in control of our day. We are being dictated and controlled by events and feelings and all types of situations. And I don't know. You can't win the fight crawling back into bed and hiding from the problem. You get up, you see what it is, and you go after it. And, the ch and there's a chance that when you go after it today, you might not win that battle. You got to be okay with taking some losses or you're never going to really get anywhere. If you're afraid to take some losses, you're afraid to go back, you're afraid to hit the ground, you can't win. You can't be a prize fighter and get in the ring with the best of the best of the best because you want a championship, but be afraid of losing. Because anytime you step in with the best of the best, there's a chance that at, at very worst, you can have a lucky punch thrown. You're going to have to be willing to take some losses. You have to be willing to go in and you get prepared. You get focus, you get ready, but you got to go in. And the thing is, a lot of you don't feel like doing something. And it's not just feel whether you feel like it or not. When I say feelings, I mean everything. You're mad, upset, you're frustrated, you're tired, you're with. All these feelings have purpose, but they aren't the indicative uh, idea. They're, they're, they're not indicative to the idea of what is in your life. They're not what's going to tell you what you should be doing. You don't make your decisions based off of your feelings. You evaluate where you are, but you don't make your, 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 your decisions. Your decisions are based off of what you determine from a reasonable and rational and inspirational pers perspective what's best for you. What are you aspiring to? What are you setting your goals for? And what happens is, but based on the feelings though, because we want to feel okay. We don't care if where we're at is good as long as we feel okay. Sometimes getting to where we need to be doesn't feel good. Sometimes it requires pushing against some, some, some resistance. Sometimes it calls for falling down and scraping up our knees. Sometimes it calls for stepping in the ring with giants. But, 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 and we don't feel like doing that. Nobody wants to step in the ring with a giant. What the hell am I going to do in the ring with a giant? But that's what it calls for. It's not about what you feel. It's about what you're committed to, what's required of you to get what it is you say you desire out of life. You know, uh, but uh, the thing is, a lot of us have this cap on our lives that limit where we can go. And it, it, our feelings have pushed us back into a corner of comfort and simplicity. And we think because there's less chance of these feelings and, and, and these setbacks and these uh, frustrations and delays and in, in all of these things, we stay in that corner of comfort. We think because we can get up and do this and this and this and have this, we're, we're good. But we don't understand that the greatest sense of 
fulfillment comes from achieving that which you were designed to achieve and progressing in growth and in impact over the course of your life. So while you are over here in this place of comfort and you have this cap or this lid or this, this ceiling on your life and, and it, 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 it's some things that's hurting you, it's like suffocating you. When you have a lid or a cap or a ceiling on your perspective expectations of what it is you want to do, that, 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 that's a, a, a part of you that's being suffocated because it's not enough rare air that's oxygenated with possibility for you to breathe it in and live. So you're, I mean, you're getting along every day, but you're suffocating. And you can't explain it. You don't know why, but you're suffocating. It's because you got this lead on your life. And uh, I've heard a lot of people use uh, different uh, uh, clues or if, you, if you're looking for ways to determine if you got this ceiling or this lid or this cap on your life, if you got something that's holding you down and won't allow you to really go. The first thing um, that when I think about it, I think about something I read in a book called Sun Stand Still by Stephen Furtick, man, probably about six years ago. And in this book, at the beginning of the book, Stephen says that if the vision that you have for your life isn't so huge that it intimidates you, it's a good chance it's insulting God. So if you got a vision, or, or, or an idea of where you're going and who you're going to become. And it doesn't intimidate you. It doesn't give you a sense of urgency. It doesn't put you on edge. You're not dreaming big enough. You're not thinking big enough. You're not pushing yourself. You're finding that place of comfort because you're more concerned with your feelings than you are your destiny. And that is unacceptable. If you are after your destiny, you're going to be uncomfortable because you're going to be constantly placed in situations where everything isn't worked out for you. You're constantly placed in situations where your faith will have to transcend your logic. You are constantly placed in situations where everything isn't ironed out and you're going to have to figure it out. But, but that's the one thing. Another thing is that, 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 that you're one of those people, you got to drag yourself out of bed in the morning to get up and get started. And there's nothing exciting about your day pulling you out of bed to get you going. It's a good chance you've got this ceiling or this cap on your life. You're not living your best life. You're not taking a, a charge and, and going after something. Huh? You're accept, accepting what life gives you, and you ain't happy with it. That's why it's nothing dragging you or pulling you out of bed in the morning. Uh, what's another one? If you're a person with a lot of time on your hand, if you're the person that everybody calls to get something done and you have the time to actually do it, you're not pushing yourself. You're not challenging yourself. You have a ceiling or a cap on what, what it is you're trying to do. And you're never going to be fulfilled. You're never going to find that place where it feels like this is it. You're never gonna be passion driven. You're gonna always be comfort driven and you're gonna always find that you don't feel like. It's always gonna be a feel like it. What's another one we got? Let's see. All the people that I see up and down my timeline talking about how bored you are. If you got time to be bored, you got a ceiling, you got a cap, you got something that's blocking your rise. Because if you grinding to go after something that's so huge, it intimidates you, you ain't got time to be bored. There's literally no time to be bored. You got a time for family, a time for self, a time to grind, a time to rest. No time to be bored. If you're sitting around bored, you're either cheating yourself because you're not actively going after your vision or your vision's too light, too light, too little, too small, dark, colorless, and won't produce the impact you were designed to produce. So that's another thing. Finally, here's the one. Here's what I know when I'm kind of on, on track. You know, it doesn't light it, it, it doesn't set everything, but when I tell certain people, what my vision is, and they nod and they go, oh yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Ceiling, cap, whatever you wanna say, it's capped. Why? Because if everybody is looking and hearing what you're saying you're trying to do, and they they they, they, they okay with it, they can understand it, and, and, it, and it doesn't baffle them, 
you're not reaching high enough. You're still in the safety zone where most people, most people reside in the safety zone, which normally produces average and mediocre, mediocre performances. If you're going to perform at a, life, at a level in life that uh, transcends what most people do, the, then if most people heard what you were going after, they would step back in amazement. There will probably be some negative responses. There are going to be some people saying you're not being realistic. If you don't hear uh, some, I don't know how you're going to do it. If nobody asks you, how in the hell you plan on doing that? You, you got to sell it. You're doing what everybody else does. Find something you can do that appears to be better than what you're doing, but within reach. You're not reaching for enough. You're trying to play it safe. You're trying to find the right little place to step on to make your next move. Sometimes you gotta take a leap. And to the average person, it's not gonna make sense because everybody in this world has been conditioned to be safe, to play it safe, to sit back and wait on something to happen for you. The problem is life isn't designed to happen, happen um, without you engaging it. It will happen for you, but you're going to have to go out and engage it. You're going to have to place a demand on life that says, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'll have. And absolutely nothing's going to stop me. And then you move toward it. Now life has got to respond to that. Life will not only respond to you, it will happen for you. But a lot of you believe life is happening to you. You believe that you're out of the, uh, out of the area or arena of control and you're simply at the mercy of life. And so you sit around and you let stuff just consistently happen. You don't sit up and engage it. You may complain about it. You may whine about it. You may tell your friends about it. Y'all have a pity party. And then you sit right there and you wait on the next thing to knock the crap out of. Well, this is what I can tell you. You're not going to avoid getting the crap knocked out of you. But what you can do is hit back. What you can do is say, I'm not going to just keep taking this beating in life and not throw some punches. I'm not going to get through life and just have been beat the hell up. I'm going to get through life and say, I took some, but I gave some. I can live with that. I can live with it. That was always my motto. I grew up in a rough, in a rough environment. I grew up. And my thing was, I, I probably won't win every fight, but my goal was, if I have to fight, you're going to know you were in one. Now, whether I win or lose doesn't matter to me. As long as I know I brought it, I am going to consistently get better at it. And eventually, people are going to know, unless you're willing to go the distance with this dude, just leave him the hell alone. Because he's not going to back down. He's not going to quit. He's not going to turn around. He's not built like that. And that's the thing about it. You've got to develop within yourself the capacity to know that I'm built for it. I don't care what I'm up against. I'm built for it. And so because I know that, I'm not afraid to reach beyond what appears or feels comfortable. Because it's not about my feelings. It's about the demand I place on my life, the expectations I have for my performance. It's easy to get caught up in how you feel. That's where most of us operate from, how we feel. We're driven by our emotions. We never sit back and evaluate the potential inside of us and then demand of ourselves that we perform at the level of that, of that potential. We look for what makes us feel best. That's why you got so many people self-medicating. That's why you got so many people in poor and bad and dysfunctional relationships, because at a certain point in time, it made them feel good. Your emotions are indicative of a current situation or reality. If you're mad, somebody wronged you or something went wrong. If you're sad, somebody... Uh, uh, maybe you lost something, you experienced loss. If you're, if you're jovial or happy or whatever, then you've experienced something you desire. And those are just indicative mechanisms. They don't have the endurance to drive decisions and habits and performance. That comes from within. That comes from making a commitment. That comes from forging ideas in your mind that become seeds that are planted, that you cultivate and guard, that you weed out any negativity uh, opposing or antithetical ideas that move against against it, no matter how reasonable or rational they sound. See, people will get you with the reason and ration. They'll walk up to you and, you know, and they'll tell you, well, you know that so-and-so percent of businesses fail within the first five years. 
Well, I'm more concerned about the other percent that succeed. I'm more concerned about, see, I believe that I can do anything that someone else does. So if somebody succeeded in business, so can I. It doesn't mean that I'm going to do it the first time, the second time, the third time, but I'm not going to quit until I get it. And that's the mindset. If, if, if you ask me, uh, you know, um, a person, one person I study is a guy, I follow a lot of guys. Anybody that's doing something positive, I'm studying them because they have something to offer. They have something to teach me. And I'm never through learning. So I'm always watching other people and I'm looking at what makes them them and, and, and what part of that is, is usable, usable outside. There's certain things that are just them. There's certain things in a person that makes them unique and it's theirs and you can't copy it and reuse it because it won't work for you. But there's certain things that are part of the pattern of success that you can find in people. And one of the things that I picked up from a guy named Evan Carmichael is this, and he wrote, actually wrote a book on it. It's called uh, Your One Word. And it's how, if you had to define yourself, with one word, it, 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 in, in everything you're about, everything that you do, if you could sit up and define how you would be branded as a person, what would it be? My one word is relentless. You know, I thought about a lot of other things because uh, if you can do a lot of things, there's a lot of things you can say, but at the end of the day, what defines how you got from where you started to where you are right now? And that would be me, relentless. It wasn't that I was always the best. It wasn't what, that I was always the smartest. It wasn't that I always had all the answers. It wasn't that I was always right. A lot of times I was stupid wrong. But what, 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 well, how did you get from where you were then? I just wouldn't quit. It's, I, I don't know anything else to tell you. I refuse to quit. I'm the kind of person that is time I got my bucket, but I wasn't stopping. Why? Because inside of me, the worst thing, and this is, this is my paradigm, the worst thing I can do as a man is give up. I can't think of anything worse. I haven't been perfect at it, but anything that I've experienced in the level of achievement of what most people would consider to be overachievement came through being relentless. It didn't come because I just had the right answer all the time and knocked it out the park the first time. I've had my moments where it just seemed like everything fell in the line, but normally that comes from momentum. That comes from you being in a place where you're doing it consistently and you're doing it and you won't relent. You keep pushing, you keep pushing. Like anything, I don't care how big it is. If you can get it to move once and get it to move a second time and you start moving it, the more you get it to move, the more easy it moves because it's starting to use the, uh, its own weight and, 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 and gravity and everything else to get it going. So, yeah, you'll have those moments where things flow. But you don't build your life around everything falling into place. You stop waiting on people to give you opportunities. You go out and you take them. You make them. You figure it out. Stop allowing, allowing people to define who you are based on their perception of reality. Everybody has an individual perception. Everybody has a unique lens through which they look at life. Stop allowing other people to give you their lens through which they're looking and determine what you can and cannot do in life. You start determining what's inside of you. Search yourself. Be honest with yourself. And if you're honest with yourself, you're going to see some things that you say, look, I, I, I'm kind of beastly over here. But if you're also honest with yourself, you look over here and say, man, I can improve. Work the hell out of what you're strong on because that's where your greatest movement is going to come from now. But don't neglect what's wrong over here. Start working on being better at it. Get you a mentor that, 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 that's good in that area. Find you somebody that can model it for you that you can sit back and watch. Even if you're watching them at a distance, study them, learn, grow, read. My God, read. I can't stress reading enough. It's one of the most neglected things there is when it comes to success is reading. I mean, you know, it's too much, it's too much, too much uh, data out there that talks about this. But here's one real simple one. Uh, when you take the top four to 5% of the performers in this world and you uh, place them in juxtaposition or a side or along, uh, the other 95% who are significantly performing significantly lower uh, or less than that five, you'll find out that that five, where that, where that, let's put it like this, the average American reads one book a year. On average, Americans read one book a year. But those 
read four books per month. That's not coincidence. That's an understanding that there's a wealth of, of information and knowledge that can make my decision making easier, that can establish a certain paradigm of thinking that can help me shift from thinking like this type of person that's not getting me what I want to thinking like this type of person because you are what you think at the very core of everything. The problem is most of us are thinking based on ideas, thoughts, and beliefs somebody else superimposed on us. Something we've never took the time to question, something we never took the time to challenge, something we never took the time to overcome. They told us who we were. They told us how to behave. They told us what we could do and couldn't do. They told us the, uh, uh, the breadth of our capacity, and we believed it. And we've lived inside those boxes for our entire lives. It's time to step outside the box. It's time to lift the lid or the covering of the cap off of what you're trying to do. It's time to challenge yourself to be greater than you ever thought was possible. There's actually no limits. The only limit you have is the one that you receive in your mind and you take to be your reality because it forges the parameters of your performance, the parameters through which you uh, reach, what you will demand and expect out of life is based on these parameters. Shake free of all of those things that hold you back and tell you what you can't do. But whatever you do, stop trusting your feelings. I'm not talking about intuition. I'm talking about the emotions of fear, anger, sadness, uh, laziness. I, I just don't feel like it. Oh, well, it's a bunch of times I don't feel like it. But I think real quickly what the outcome is going to be if I don't. If I just sit here and lay in the bed all day and just call it a day, how far back will that put me? See, it won't just put me a day behind because that's not how life works. That's not the dynamic of momentum and power. A day will cost you in sometimes weeks and maybe even months. If that day had something special in it, and you'll never know because you never went after it. There are certain days that are progressive. That, that means that you're going to go through step by step, second by second, and you're going to get your progressions in small increments. But there are those boosted days. They're like turbo days. If you show up that day, crazy stuff happens. You get, 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 you get, you, you'll get a 15, 20, 25% gain in that one day. But if that's the day you took off, it's the same way in investing in the market. There are certain days that you can't miss. And it shows the people who stay steady in the market the longest over, they say over 10 years, 20 years, they get gains. But there were certain days along that, if they missed that one day, they lost so many percent because that day had a hit in it. How are you going to know if the day that, how are you going to know whether you even missed it or not if you're taking days off because you don't feel like it? I mean, you've got to have something inside of you. And, it, and, and a lot of what you need inside of you won't happen until you take that darn cap or that ceiling off. Because as long as that on you, number one, you're being suffocated. So you don't have a lot of emotional and psychological, spiritual, and physical energy because you're suffocated by the cap that's on your life. It, 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 it literally limits the oxygenation of, uh, of the air and possibilities, what you expect and what you think is possible. And that alone suffocates you. And it keeps you shooting for what you feel like doing because you don't really feel like a whole lot when you've got that cap on. You got to take it off. You got to determine in yourself, look, if I set my mind to it, I can do it. If I can conceive it in my mind, that's all the evidence I need that it's possible because that's where things start. They start in your mind and then they become a reality in the fifth dimension, in the fourth dimension. And you're working on moving and the universe is conspiring with you and the two of you are working and the universe is yielding to you. All this time you've been complaining about life doing you this way, doing you that way, treating you this way and all of that. And all of a sudden you make up in your mind that you will not be denied and you start going after it. You find out, wait a minute, life kind of pays me uh, on demand. You know, I just haven't been demanding much. I've been whining about what's going on. I've been talking about what's wrong. But you're focusing on the wrong thing. You what did you focus on? You feel what you focus on. You amplify. Start demanding what it is you want, and start moving toward it. Start speaking it. Start living it. Start planning it. Write it down. Schedule it. 
every way you can. Make it a part of how you think, how you see. Make it, put it places where every way you look, you see it. You might not pay attention to it every time you pass it, but your subconscious does. And it's 96 to 98% of what you do in life, all your behaviors, 90, 96 to 98% of them are controlled by your subconscious and your non-conscious brain. Not your conscious thinking, not your will. That's why willpower doesn't work in weight loss. That's why willpower doesn't work in trying to get major projects and major goals done. Because while you're consciously thinking about it, you can push yourself. But so much of your life is controlled under the surface. The drive home, you, you're not thinking about that. Most of the times you get home and don't even remember how you got there. That's because of the, the non-conscious brain, the subconscious, all that stuff is taking care of it for you. 400 bits of billion... 400 billion bits of information is being processed by your subconscious, non-conscious. That's the subconscious mind and non-conscious brain. 2,000 bits of information by your conscious. 2,000 versus 400 billion. So you see how your life is controlled. So you have to work with that. You have to understand that. You have to set intent. Now, you set intent with your conscious. And when you set that intent, it's relayed to your subconscious through your reticular activating system. It says it's important. Now, all of a sudden, things that apply to it are at the forefront. And you're going like, man, where has this always been? It's always been there. It simply wasn't important to you at the time. You hadn't made it a part of your intent. You hadn't made it a part of your world. So your, 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 your non-conscious sit up and said, I'm going to filter it, categorize it, put it out of the way, and put in front of them what they're focusing on. And you just happen to be focusing on all that negative. So guess what you got? All that negative stuff. And the problem is, whatever you focus on, you feel. Whatever you focus on, you recreate. Challenge yourself to move beyond your feelings. I can't stress that enough. Try, you've got to get to a point to where you understand you're not going to circumvent the vicissitudes and struggles of life. That's not going to happen. You're going to have times where it gets hard. You're going to have times where it gets rough. You're going to have times where it seems like you're, you're pushing up against an immovable object and you don't have the answer. You've got to be relentless. You've got to be non-yielding. You've got to push with an inexorable force that simply says, I'm going to get it or I'm going to die trying. And that's how you live your life. Don't go after things that don't have any meaning to you. That's a waste of energy. We spend a lot of time pining after things that have no intrinsic value. We spend a lot of time just lined up, just you know, doing stuff, just wasting time. I make it a point not to take on anything that I am not passionate about. Why? Because I'm built to go until I get. And why do I want to spend time going after something that I really never wanted in the first place? It just was good. It was up there. So I, just, I only invest my time in the things that matter to me so that I can give it everything I got. And if I die trying, it was worth it. The last thing I want to die trying is going after something I never really wanted in the first place. So with that being said, look, I'm going to off it here again. Uh, I love, you know, for you guys to take advantage of the rapid breakthrough sessions, the business breakthrough sessions, uh, the information is there. If you haven't gotten your copy of Critical Mass, book number 20, um, go ahead and put your order in. Uh, man, it, that, that, that was a journey. That was a journey. So, um, Whatever it is that you do, be committed to it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Stop listening to uh, the sweet nothings of neg negativity that are whispered in your ear by minimal-minded people who have already walked away from their, their challenge, their purpose, their destiny, and accepted a, a, a lot in life of less than. Challenge yourself. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I'm telling you it's going to be damn hard, but I'm telling you it's going to be so rewarding. Uh, you're going to learn so much about yourself, good and bad. And, 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 and you get to shape what you're going to become, and that is key. Are you shaping your own destiny? Or are you allowing life to twirl you in whatever direction the current is moving at the time? I challenge you to step up to the plate and be the best you you can possibly be each and every day. And you're going to have to get out of your feelings to do that. But it's possible. 
That being said, I'm out here as I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that at the end of the day, I die on the year. I'm telling you to do the same thing. Uh, see you guys maybe later on today. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit more about the book, uh, some other things that are going on, but I'm going to get off here now. It's a lot to do. Have an unbelievable day. And, I, and, and finally, you know what I always say, make something happen. Don't let this day end and you didn't do something significant. But, you know, to me, it's uh, two or three things every day. It's two or three things that I have to do, that I wake up, that at the top of my priority list. And so it starts out with that. It doesn't start out with a checklist. See, don't, don't fill your day with a bunch of checks that really don't amount to anything. Find that one or two things that you do that's going to have the most significance, that's going to get, get you the most out of the day. Put that hard work in to get that done. It's probably going to take longer than it does to check off those little bitty things that make you feel like you really did a lot during the day, but they'll have more significance. Prioritize the things that have to be done in the order of significance, and you're going to find you make your progress a whole lot smoother and quicker. With that being said, I'm going to get out of here again. Have a great day, and I will check on you a little bit later. I'm out. Peace.